Okay, so uh, welcome to something brand new. Um, this, uh, in this slot, as you've seen the last couple of days, we've tried to do something different. And what we decided to do for the last day is a sort of Ignite style set of talks. Um, Ignite style talks are basically where the presenters have given uh, 20 slides and they auto advance. There's no ability for them to control the slides. Uh, they're just along for the ride, so they better keep going. And uh, in this particular instance, uh, rather than give them open frame to talk about whatever they wanted, we asked them to sort of talk a little bit about RubyConf um, and the Ruby community specifically. Um, this works better in the morning, but I'll, I'll sort of, well, I'll just talk about what in the morning. As you've seen, and a lot of you are experiencing, this is your first RubyConf. And so there's a lot of history of RubyConf and what it used to do and where it is now and how it's gotten to the point that it is, that it gets lost in the day-to-day -day of just everyone having a good time at RubyConf. So we asked the presenters to basically talk, speak on that topic a little bit about a different, different part of it. So, um, yeah. I don't think I need to set it up any more than that. Um, so uh, without further ado, uh, I would remind all of the presenters to state their name at the beginning of this. Don't get lost. Like, oh, I got slides. Remember to say who you are. Um, so, But I will start off with the first one with Rich Kilmer. Thank you. All right. So we all have our own emoji. This is mine. Evan chose them for us. So I'm about to start. So I am Rich Kilmer. I'm going to be talking to you about the foundations of our community uh, and RubyConf. Um, you know, the, in the early days of Ruby, um, you know, as Matt's talked about, the beginning of Ruby in 1993, uh, when, when it started coming over to the United States, we had our Ruby Talk list, which was primarily an English list. The early part of Ruby Talk was still in Japanese, but um, a lot of it was in English. We had the Ruby Application Archive, which was basically an index of libraries you could download. And, but then we moved over in our first conference into Tampa. And Tampa's conference uh, was the first Ruby conference. It had, I believe, around 40 people there. Um, thir what's that? 34, 34 people. Uh, it coincided with Uppsala, which was a, a total nerd conference, right? And uh, as a matter of fact, the first two years coincided with Uppsala. Uh, and uh, people were there for Uppsala, but they started, they went to this RubyConf thing, and I got to go to this. Uh, one of the things uh, presented to us at that Ruby conference was RDoc, uh, which Dave Thomas created to help create the pickaxe book, uh, which I'd read to learn about Ruby. Uh, but what was great about that conference is we were really trying to understand what Ruby was and what it was going to be. And so the last session we had, we got into these little teams and we tried to figure out what Ruby was going to be used for. Was it going to be used to test other applications or document other applications? It was just this very interesting little thing of what would Ruby be used for? It would be to help other things. The next conference was Seattle in 2002. Uh, we decided that conferences were going to move to different cities every year and we'd never repeat them. We failed at that. But still, um, we'd never repeat them and we'd try and bounce them around. And so we went to Seattle. Uh, again with Uppsala. This is the first Ruby Central talk, or sorry, uh, conference. So Ruby Central was formed by Chad Fowler, myself, uh, Dave Thomas, and David Allen Black. We were the original directors of that. And a couple of things from this conference which were interesting is we had this guy show up um, named Y, and that was his name. Um, and he had this thing called YAML. And I loved YAML so much that I converted my project before my talk to YAML. Uh, my project, project was on Freebase. That was the actual library name. Um, I didn't know what freebasing was. Dave Thomas <laughs> talked about Dave's vacation. What he did on his vacation, he wrote a 25,000 line Ruby uh, system. It was an accounting system. And we were like, you actually wrote an application in Ruby, 25,000 lines. Who on earth would write that much Ruby? Then we moved over to Austin the next year. And Austin was a big year, and 2003 was a really, really big year for us. Um, Austin, I don't believe, was, a, was an Uppsala conference. Um, so it was uh, the first time we weren't with Uppsala. Uh, this environment came over, not the Ruby application archive, but Ruby Forge. This was the first place where code could actually be uploaded and version controlled. And so our community started having shared libraries there. Uh, Jim Wyrick uh, was one of the speakers there uh, who introduced this concept of rake. 
And so Rake was first introduced at this conference in 2003. Uh, this was something that Jim started writing in the morning, proving the fact that he could do it in the afternoon, demoed it. Um, and then, not to be over outdone, but that night, we all decided that we needed a package manager and spent the evening writing Ruby gems, uh, the first Ruby gems. And we didn't have version control, we didn't have Wi-Fi, so we actually passed a USB stick around and committed code all night. Um, and Ruby gems was born. The next year was in Virginia, in Chantilly, outside of DC. Um, and this was interesting because this was the first year that Ruby Central ever had an official sponsor for anything. Um, so uh, the, the sponsorship thing, we can't really do these conferences without it, but we hadn't had it then. And the sponsorship was for the dinner, and my company happened to sponsor the dinner. Um, so we were the first sponsors of a RubyConf. We, we paid for dinner for that night. Um, there was this thing Yarv introduced there, and three years later got committed into Trunk. Um, but it was going to be this great new way of, of high-speed Ruby, and it came in, uh, I think, in one nine, right? Yarv was introduced. Uh, and then this Danish guy came and um, spoke about this framework, Ruby on Rails, and we were like, web stuff, whatever. But this ended up becoming, you know, this question of what will be the killer app for Ruby? And Rails was and is still the kind of killer app for Ruby. But the community is the foundation for Ruby. The community is what we are. And certain people are no longer with us. And so I just want to recognize that those who are here today for the first time um, and those that have left us some permanently, um, they're all part of who we are. I just want everyone to remember that uh, you make this community and you are its foundation. Okay, so that's my emoji, geeky face. Uh, and I'm Nadia, I'm from London, UK, and I'm going to be speaking about community, so how you can get involved in the Ruby Central uh, conferences and the community. I don't know when it's going to advance to my next slide. This is fun. So, uh, everyone enjoying the conference so far? <laughs> so, Matt asked us all at the beginning of the conference, raise your hand if it was your first time here, and raise your hand if you were a first time speaker. And for me, I didn't raise my hand for either of these things. But if it had been two years ago at RailsConf, I would, I would have raised my hand for both of those things. So since um, first speaking at RailsConf in 2015, I went on to speak again in the following year, and I've also been on committee twice for RubyConf, once in 2015, and again for this conference. So hope you're all enjoying the talks, because if not, sorry. Uh, but a year before my first speaking experience, I was not even in the tech community yet. I was learning to code in 12 weeks. And so I want to show with my story how easy it is to get stuck in straight away, irrespective of your level of experience. So a lot of people who are into speaking, they come to me and they say, how did you get started? I really want to get into speaking, but I can't possibly start at somewhere like RailsConf or RubyConf because they're so big. Uh, I probably need something a lot smaller. Well, I say that's not true. You can get started because that's what I did. And here's the thing. We need new speakers. Uh, we've got a lot of slots to fill. And it's boring if we have the same faces and the same ideas being discussed each time. So to keep us extending, to keep the conferences interesting, we need a healthy pipeline of people coming through. So what do we do? First of all, we have blind reviews on the CFP. So you could have never spoken before. Nobody knows who you are. But if you submit a great idea, uh, you have a very high chance of making the cut. Uh, because we don't deselect when it becomes non-blind and go, we don't know who that person is, so no, you're not speaking. Uh, so you might think, that's great, I can submit an idea and there won't be any bias towards uh, who I am, but what do I talk about? I don't know what's interesting to the Ruby community, or there are so many things, or I'm not sure. Well. Speaking at these conferences are a great opportunity to talk about Ruby, uh, something you know about or something you want an opportunity to level up in. But it's also a great uh, chance to talk about something completely different that you're interested in because we're open and interested in hearing new ideas. For example, my first talk was about game theory and the Nash bargaining solution. And it was in the general track at RailsConf. And I remember I'd given this lightning talk at work and my boss had come up to me and said, this was great. I want to introduce you to my friend who's going to encourage you and help you, uh, encourage you to, to 
to make a full-length talk. And so I met my uh, boss's friend, and I explained the, the idea to them. And I was like, uh, could this be a full-length talk? And they, they listened intently, and they were like, this is great. You should submit this to, to RailsConf. And I, uh, I looked at this person and thought, they, didn't, they don't know what they're talking about, because this is game theory, and, I, and they're telling me to submit to Rails. Turns out that person was Sarah May. So she didn't know what she was talking about. And it's good I listened to her, because I ended up speaking at RailsConf. So it worked out very well for me. Um, but what I would say is you might be thinking, that's cool if I want to do talks, but what if I don't want to speak? Uh, are there any other ways I can get involved? And it turns out that there are a load of ways that you can get stuck in. So I mentioned earlier that I've been on committee, so we're always looking for new people to help select talks for us. Um, maybe you want to mentor a conference newbie if you've been coming regularly. We've got the Scholar Guide program. Or a lightweight way to facilitate a discussion is to take part in Birds of a Feather. Uh, I remember when I was asked to be on committee, I was really scared because I thought, what do I know? I've only spoken once at one of these things, and I didn't even talk about Ruby or Rails. But in the same way that we want new speakers, we're also really open to a range of perspectives on committee. We're always looking for new people. I've been so fortunate to be able to run the Beyond Ruby tra track twice. So in 2015, we had talks on the game Go, wrestling, math, the Mandelbrot set. And this year, we've had amazing talks on music, board games. And after this, in Salon A, we've got an improv workshop. I'm very excited. I hope to see you all there. So you might be thinking, OK, this is all great, Nadia, but I don't have a boss who knows Sarah May who's going to hook me up. And I don't know anyone <laughs> uh, who can help me. So uh, this is all well and good for you. Well. If you told me that, I would look at you and I would say that that is a big fat lie. Because you know that the Ruby Central staff are all work, walking around in blue shirts. Uh, you've seen all the directors on stage and you know all the speakers. I'm here and we know Matt's is nice, so when you go and speak to these people, they are inevitably going to be nice to you. Uh, AJ Simmons gave a great talk yesterday about how we're a great community, but we need to take it one step further and weaponize our niceness and help others by lending our privilege. So if you can help people do that, and you're going to find out more about how you can do that in Alison's talk later. Um, but in the meantime, I am going to raise my hand and say, come to me. Um, I really want to help everyone. So if you've got a proposal you want someone to look at, um, if you want me to introduce you to somebody that you really want to meet, um, if you want me to put your name forward for the review committee or discuss ways to get involved that can suit you, I'm really, really happy to help. Uh, so I hope I've shown you that this community is wonderful. Well, you knew that already. Uh, but that the barriers to entry are low, particularly if you're already here. It's very easy for you to get stuck in and be uh, a big contributor at the next conference. Uh, so yeah, I hope you get stuck in. Thanks. I'm waiting for my actual slide to appear. How y'all doing? Good afternoon, I'm Michael Hartle. I'd like to thank Sarah May for inviting me to give this talk today. It's good to be here. Ruby started in 1993, uh, created uh, by Yukihiro Matsumoto, uh, better known as uh, Mats. Yeah, it was first publicly released in 1995. But it started in Japan, and so a lot of the early discussion was in Japanese. But the language itself is in English, and. Uh, comments and documentation is largely in English. So uh, that gave an opportunity which was seized by Dave Thomas, uh, who wrote a book for the English-speaking world uh, called Programming Ruby, uh, but it's uh, more affectionately known as the Pickaxe. So I read the Pickaxe sometime around 2005, 2006, and then I took a Ruby on Rails course that Dave Thomas and Mike Clark taught together. And that started me on a path that led through sort of a circuitous route, but eventually ended up with uh, the Ruby on Rails tutorial, uh, which uh, I, I wrote, I published first in 2010. And uh, a few years before that, I had attended my first RubyConf, which was in 2007 in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, so it had already been going on for a few years, since 2001, but uh, 2007 is a while ago now. I think. This qualifies me as an old timer. Uh, it was great to go to RubyConf. I'd been to RailsConf, but RubyConf is different. It's smaller, it's more intimate, has a different vibe. And so I had a chance to uh, get to know some of my fellow Rubyists, and it was really a great opportunity. And among other things, I had a chance uh, to meet Matt's. 
And a, a few years after that, uh, we were doing the, the Ruby Friends hashtag you may have seen on, on Twitter. Uh, so Matt came up to me and asked me if I wanted to take a picture with him. So I thought, hmm, thinking emoji, like, do I want to have a picture with the creator of Ruby? Like, yes, I do. Uh, so Matt's is incredibly friendly. I know he's embarrassed by Minuswan. Matt's is nice, and so we are nice. Uh, but Matt's really does set the tone uh, for the Ruby community, and I think that's a, a really important part of what we do here. So that, that's how it, it began. Ruby started mainly in, in Japan and the United States, but over the years, it's really gone global. And so I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, a lens that I have into this uh, ongoing development and evolution. Uh, a couple years ago, a couple friends and I started a company called Learn Enough, which is now sort of a, the parent organization for the Rails tutorial. And so, uh, among other things, Learn Enough includes a series of introductory tutorials, starting with right at the foundations with the, the most fundamental computing skill uh, for this sort of work, which is uh, Learn Enough command line to be dangerous. And then going through a series of tutorials, uh, ending with Learn Enough Ruby to be dangerous, which is currently in preparation. So you see it, it goes, goes into Ruby, and then it, goes in, it leads into the Ruby on Rails tutorial, which, among other things, is now available as part of a subscription service we call the Learn Enough Society. So when we put this out there, a lot of people came to us and said, we, we want to take your course, but we can't afford it. So like we had students, um, people in the international community who, uh, you know, maybe because of the exchange rate, just, it was just cost prohibitive. So we thought, we should offer a scholarship for people. And so we decided to, to run an experiment. It was, we didn't really know how to run a scholarship, so we thought, well, what if we just put a text area on the internet? What happens if you put a text area on the internet and ask people uh, to share in confidence their story, why they want a scholarship? Uh, and one of the things you find out when you do this is that people are incredibly honest. Like, not only do they not abuse the privilege, but they tell you about what's going on in their lives, and it's really inspiring. Um, people are determined to learn. Now, as part of this, we uh, started asking people if they were comfortable with it to share a picture of themselves in, in their home, in their town, with their computer, someplace that was uh, uh, meaningful to them. So we could put a, uh, a, a, a face and a place to the name and story. Um, and we've got a great response. We had a great response. Lots of people have shared pictures. Uh, and it's important to, to note, I think, that these images you're seeing are not cherry-picked. These are just the last ones that have come through. Uh, so this is a real cross-section of people who are coming into the Ruby community. It's, it's in, just an incredible variety of people like around, uh, across the country, across the world. And I, I think this is something that we can really be proud of in the Ruby community. We've created a place where people you know, want to be part of. And I also think it's good to cultivate a sense of responsibility. Like what we do here has a global impact. Uh, and it's good. We should keep doing what we've been doing and also uh, be inspired to uh, getting better. So whether you're an old timer like me or an, an old, old timer like Matt's, or whether this is your first RubyConf, welcome to the Ruby community. We're glad you're here. Thank you. I feel underdressed with a monocle emoticon. I'm going to take this uh, open. <laughs> what? OK. Fair enough. Take this opening slide to tell you that I attended two funerals on Saturday. It's awkward because I only intended to attend one. They both had the same uh, name, just different addresses on the same street. <laughs> so my first day of work as a Ruby developer was at uh, the same conference that Michael just mentioned. It's uh, RubyConf 2007 in Charlotte, North Carolina. It was during that conference that I heard about uh, the general idea that they didn't want just one really large international uh, conference, they wanted regional conferences. I had the luxury of working for a company, HashRocket, that who to this day still values conference participation. Uh, I applied for and spoke at Scotland on Rails and met Graham and Paul and Alan, watched them put on a conference. I said, if they can do it, I can do it. So in 2010, my wife and I decided to show off Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, we set up a budget based on sponsorship and ticket sales. We had a wonderful venue. We put up a registration page and waited. We had a delightful event uh, that everyone loved. Um, we also lost about $10,000 on that conference. <clears throat> Largely, that's because we could afford to. We couldn't really afford to, but we had credit cards. So uh, conferences are exhausting. And I'm, I'm trying to front load all the terrible stuff. 
Conferences are exhausting. We had a pretty regular uh, regimen of water, ibuprofen, water, food, water. Uh, but we, when we went to plan the next year, we realized that we had to be a little bit more careful because in the first year, we accidentally scheduled uh, the same time as Windy City Rails, as that left us scrambling for a new venue, et cetera. So if you're going to plan a conference, look about a year out um, for, a, for a first year event. Six to nine months, if you already know the venue really well or if it's, uh, the event is running like clockwork for you. And don't forget that uh, regardless of who you are, it takes effort to get people to spend money on your thing. People who know they want to come generally require two to three mentions before they'll buy that ticket. They know they're coming, they want to come, and yet you still don't sell tickets. Uh, invest in your venue, uh, both in time selecting the venue and understanding what's included, what's not. That barn might be free. All you have to do is add electrical, AV, bathrooms. Uh, it doesn't have to be expensive, but be aware of what you're spending. And if your audience isn't a group that you know well, get somebody who does on your team. Maybe you only do open source. Get somebody who does it as a corporate job. They're gonna have different uh, thoughts and uh, feelings about what's successful. So low points, not raising enough money in sponsorship and ticket sales, uh, getting sick while hosting, having to go to urgent care, uh, looking at the, your choice of clothing while going through pictures years later. Uh, budget for our two-track conference ran 40 to 65,000. And that includes a lot, a lot, a lot of bells and whistles. Um, another conference runs a similar event in that same value, uh, venue, and they, their conference runs about 25,000. How do I know? I asked. Talk to people who are putting on conferences and they'll be happy to share all the details. We don't have a lot of uh, people to share with. <clears throat> do the math like you're gonna sell out. Run the revenue like nobody's gonna show up and you have to give away a lot of free tickets for people to be there your first year it's especially. Uh, and it's, it's not possible to put on an event like this without a lot of volunteers and help. You're gonna ask your network, you're gonna spend some capital, do it. Remember, nobody is above approaching to speak or sponsor at your event. Be prepared for the conversation. We had Clyde Stubblefield, who is uh, James Brown's drummer, and we got him because I went and looked at Wikipedia for famous people that lived in my town. <laughs> it worked. Uh, try new things, keep what works. Uh, if they don't, now you know. Try new formats, talk lengths, maybe a walking conference or lazy river conference. Uh, just like Kickstarter, set a goal that you know that you can achieve, and then set stretch goals. All right, we know this much is covered. All right, now we, we had more ticket sales. What, how can we extend the conference if you want to, et cetera? Just keep in mind that this is absolutely something that any of you could do, uh, and creating an event gives you the opportunity to put something new into the world, meet people, affect people, and uh, after six years of running a conference, that is absolutely felt. I have, so, I have so many people I've met and I consider friends these days that I would not otherwise. So high points uh, in putting on our events, we had folks from uh, attendees, just attending a conference from India, Australia, Chile, Spain, Netherlands, Germany, um, as well as all throughout the US. Just make sure that you set expectations, reset them as you need, but make sure that people always see what they expect from you and make sure that they can trust you. Thanks. Hello, <clears throat> now it's my turn to wait for the long 15 second transition slide. <laughs> I'm talking about encouragement. I'm Allison, uh, I'm from just outside of Washington, DC. Any DC folks here? All right, great. Okay, um, this is a story about the land of Ruby a lot. Now, you might be asking yourself, what is this land of Ruby a lot? It sounds interesting and mysterious. Well, the land of Ruby a lot is just like the Care Bears home care a lot. How many people here know the Care Bears? Okay, good, that's a lot of hands. I was like, are people gonna be like the Care what's? Uh, in the land of Ruby a lot, there are a lot of people who care a lot about Ruby and a lot about each other. In Ruby a lot, 
You can see Aaron Patterson making puns and talking about Ruby internals, Sarah May mentoring Sandy Metz, encouraging us to be more confident in our abilities, Matt's reminding us to be nice, Adam being a welcoming face, and many, many others. The Ruby community is filled with people who are supportive, encouraging, and inclusive, who actually want to see others succeed and grow. After all, Matt's is nice, and so we are nice. My first experience in the land of Ruby a lot was in Miami in 2013. I was excited to be a part of the Scholar program and lucky that I was coming to RubyConf knowing a whole bunch of DC-based Rubyists. About a month before the conference, I got a message from one of them saying, did you know that there are lightning talks in this land of Ruby a lot? You're doing one, right? And every day thereafter, for an entire month, someone from our local group pinged me to ask if I was doing a lightning talk. At first I said no. I mean, what could I even speak about at my first conference? I wasn't a full-time developer yet, but by the time that I got to Ruby a lot, it was like I didn't even have to think about it. Signups were open, and of course I was doing a lightning talk. And it was a really great experience. I felt super welcomed and encouraged. It helped me start some really great conversations with lots of different people that year. A few years and many conference talks later, I started toting along my own little bear. Um, this is Devin's fifth tech conference. He's two and a half. Uh, and I was asked to be on the RailsConf program committee. And going through every proposal, I really tried my hardest to help folks shape theirs, give feedback when possible, encourage new folks to submit conference talks, because as Nadia said, it's important that we continue to hear from new voices in the community in addition to the ones that we know and love. In helping to organize RailsConf, uh, Rails I saw that the role was not only helping to craft an interesting conference that people would attend, but also that when people entered this land of Ruby a lot, they felt welcomed and included. And that last piece, though, that isn't up to the conference organizers. That last piece is up to every individual that's here. So, as you end your experience in this wonderful land of Ruby a lot, before you head home, I encourage you all to take three steps. First, reach out to someone to encourage reach out to someone to encourage them to do something that they might not otherwise do. Whether this is walking up to someone they want to meet to say hi, attending a talk that they think might be over their head, or telling lightning talk speakers that their talk was really great. Second, find the folks who are different than you are, who have a different perspective and say hi. There are lots of different perspectives here. There are people who come to the industry from traditional backgrounds and from non-traditional ones, or those who have really varied experiences in the industry. You never know what you're going to learn when you start talking to someone new. And third, make sure that the others around you feel included. Leave space if you're talking in a group or in a circle so that others can join. Welcome people who might stand next to you or sit next to you. Say hi to somebody who's standing alone. How many people here feel like they've accomplished at least one of those three things at this conference so far? Okay, good, good amount of hands. I hope that by the end of the day, you can all raise your hands knowing that you helped build this community, that you said or did something encouraging to help boost someone else up. Because Ruby, RubyConf, and the land of Ruby a lot doesn't just happen. It's imagined, it's created, and it's built by all of us. Thank you. Um, here are some various places on the internet where you can find me. I also want to mention that I work at Collective Idea, which is an awesome consultancy, and you should come and talk to me about working with us and have a great remainder of your conference. Thank you.